One of the most asked questions that I get is how do I print the pages in my notebooks? So I always try to answer it as clear as I can, but I realize that it's actually not that easy to explain in words. It doesn't just suffice to just say it. I have to show it. So in this video, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys how I print the pages for my pocket notebooks and hardcover journals. When you're making your own notebook, it's nice to have the option to print your own pages because it's customizable to your desired thickness and layout and also, honestly, I feel like it's more cost effective. If you only need to make two or three, then I'd say it's worth it to purchase a um, text block that's already made um, to save time. I haven't found many places that sell them. I did find a few in Etsy and I know there's one in Joanne's fabric that's already made. But the problem with that is already made text blocks are usually expensive. And if you're like me and you're a small business owner and you need a lot to a lot of text blocks to make a lot of journals, then it's not gonna be worth it in the long run to purchase them because then the product cost will be so high and at the end, it's just not gonna be worth it. The process of printing your own pages is actually quite simple once you get the hang of it. But in the beginning, it can be quite daunting because, well, there's a lot of things you have to consider. Like what kind of printer can I use? Or what type of paper? How thick should it be? Um, what layout, line, dotted, or grid? Um, so all these things I'm going to try to um, go over with you all and hopefully you'll find them helpful. So without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to consider the size of paper you're going to print in, which will be determined by 1. What size you'd like your notebook to be and 2. The type of binding method you plan to use. If you're using a binding method that does not require you to fold the pages, like perfect binding for example where you use hot glue to bind the spine, then it will be simpler. You can just use any paper that fits that size. But if you're using a binding method that requires you to fold pages like let's say the saddleback method with staples or the kettle stitch or the coptic stitch methods, then you'll have to do a little measuring. For example, if you want to make a 3.5 by 5 pocket notebook that requires you to fold, then you just have to make sure that the paper you're printing on is big enough that when folded in half is still at least 3.5 by 5. For this example, a good size to use would be an 8.5 by 11, also called the letter size. You can use one sheet of 8.5 by 11 Cut it in half to make two 8.5 by 5.5. Then fold each in half to get four, four and a quarter by 5.5 pages. Once folded, trim to size. Basically, for each letter sized paper, you can get 4 pages of 3.5 by 5. Now, for example, if you wanted to make a bigger notebook like a, let's say, 5.5 by 7 hardcover journal, then obviously a letter sized paper when folded in half is too small. So in this case, I would instead use a legal size 8.5 by 14 to have at least 5.5 by 7 when folded in half. Of 
Okay, so you get the idea. Make sure that the paper you're printing on is big enough that when folded in half, is still at least the size that you want. Why is it important to consider the paper size to print on, you might ask? Well, because knowing the size of paper you need will help you design your page layout and also help you know what kind of printer you'll need to print that size. As a rule of thumb, I try to print in standard sized sizes like letter, legal, and tabloid. It makes it a little easier to find places where you can buy them in bulk. This part is really up to you. Um, it depends on your preference how thin or thick you want your pages to be. You can make it however you want it. Um, I would just advise that if you want your pages to be thicker, make sure that your printer can accommodate that thickness. Otherwise, it might jam. Also, it might be smart to try different types of um, pen um, to make sure that it won't bleed through the pages. Um, for my pocket notebooks, I use 24 pounds, that's 90 GSM, and for my soft cover and hardcover notebooks, I use 28 pounds or 105 GSM. By comparison, just to give you guys an idea, a typical copy paper or a bond paper is only about 20 pounds, that's 75 GSM, while a cardstock is usually 32 pounds, 120 GSM. You also have to consider what layout you'd like your pages to be. If you're making lined notebooks, how far apart do you want your rows to be? Do you want wide ruled or college ruled? Also, do you want to have margins? These are just some of the things you can consider. The same thing goes for dotted notebooks. Consider how far apart do you want your dots to be? Or how dark do you want them to be? Because I know some like their dots really light. Also, make sure the dots are all equally apart, that any four points would make a perfect square. I'd say that the biggest challenge in using either layout is keeping the left and right side aligned along the hinge of the book. If you watch my video on how to make pocket notebooks using staples, you'll see how to make sure they are aligned when you fold the pages. Adobe Photoshop is probably the best and easiest software you can use to design your pages. However, not everyone has access to Photoshop. If you want, you can actually simply use a Word document. It takes longer to make a layout, but once you've done it once and save it as a template, you don't have to do it again. You can just use the same template to print each time. Since not everyone has easy access to Photoshop or has Photoshop, I'll show you how I made a template to print my pocket notebooks using Word document. First, I make sure that the margins are all the way at the end. Then, I mark horizontally the center of the page. This is my cutting point where I cut a whole stack of letter-sized papers in half later.
and it's also where the head or the top of each pages will be coming from. Finally, I insert a line and copy and paste them to make several lines across the page. Viewing the grid line will definitely help for this part. You can find it under Layout, Align, then View Grid Line. Now here is a trick I want to share with you. When I'm making a template for my pocket notebooks, I use the center as the starting point for the head of each page. So this right here is the bottom of one half sheet, and this right here is its top. Then the second half sheet's head is here, and the bottom right there. I make sure to have a bigger gap for the heads compared to the bottoms. Basically, the two half sheets are like a mirror image of each other from the center line where we'll cut. This way, when we are aligning our stack of the half sheets later, the row of lines will all be aligned even if we accidentally cut the center unevenly. Just make sure you are aligning using the bottom of each half sheets, not the top, so that the alignment will not be dependent on the cut at the top. So there you go. That's how you would use a Word document to make a layout template for a pocket notebook. Let's say you want to make a bigger notebook, like let's say a hardcover journal, where the size is still within the measurement of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Then I would just change the layout into landscape and it would look like this. And if you prefer dotted instead of lined, it would look like this. Let's say, however, you want an even bigger notebook with the size that is that goes beyond an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Then I would use an 8.5 by 14 still on the landscape, landscape layout and it would look like this. And for a dotted, it would look like this. So, you get the idea. I wish I can show you guys how I made each and every single template I made, but really, the best way to learn is by you just trying it yourself. I encourage you guys to play around with Word if you don't have Photoshop. It can really be fun. And again, once you already made a template, you don't have to do it again. You can just use the same thing to print over and over. Okay, so now you have the paper with the layout of your choice, and now it's time to print. What kind of printer do you need? Good news is, you don't necessarily have to have a very expensive printer. When I started Amethyst Atelier, I bought the most inexpensive printer that I could afford at that time. I got the Epson Workforce WF2830. It's an inkjet printer which didn't even have the capability to print double-sided automatically. I had to print on one side and manually turn them over to print the other side. But you know what? It worked really well. It did the job and it did it well. For under $130, that printer served me really well for almost two years. Unfortunately though, it did die on me. Poor thing had to print a whole lot of merchandise. So then I was planning to get another Epson with EcoTank to save some money from ink this time. But my mother-in-law actually got me as a present a pricier printer the Epson ET5850. This time, it did have the feature to print double-sided automatically and I was very excited. But then, I did an experiment. I compared the time it took to print 50 pages manually versus automatically and honestly, they weren't that different. The automatic was ahead just a few minutes. 
So what I'm trying to say is, you don't necessarily have to have a big expensive printer. A regular inkjet would do. Just make sure it prints the paper size that you need and prints clearly. It also wouldn't hurt to check how much you'll have to spend for ink. Nowadays, many are using eco tanks instead of cartridges and they work just as well and costs much less. Hope you find this video informative and helpful. If you have further questions on how to print your own pages when you're making your own notebooks, just feel free to give a comment down below. See you guys next time!